What's up everyone, Hundula here from Philly Insider and Inside the Eagles, and today we've got something a little different for you guys. So, I know I'm wearing the Sixers shirt, uh, I know I just was talking about the Eagles too, and I have been most of the offseason, but we got the USFL draft coming up soon, and the Philadelphia Stars are one of the eight teams, I believe, that'll be in it, um, and I'm personally getting excited for it. I wanted to take a look at five guys in an honorable mention who I would love to be um, drafted to the Philadelphia Stars, who I think they should really consider. Now, just for context, um, not all these guys have committed to playing in the USFL. Some of them kind of have, but the draft pool is largely unknown. Also, just for context, this is kind of how it'll shake out. Day one is going to be quarterbacks in round one. They're going to do it round, round position. Is gonna, each round is going to be a position. And then rounds two through four is edge rushers, defensive ends. Five, seven is offensive tackles. Eight through 11 is cornerbacks. And then Round 12, it goes back to quarterbacks. So they're doing it by round, and also it's a snake draft order. So the Philadelphia Stars will have the third pick in round one, and then it will kind of revert back. I'm just going to be looking at, you know, five to six players, um, regardless of position who I'm kind of looking at. Some of them will be quarterbacks just because that's going to be, you know, two times in the first day. I think it's pretty important to look at that. But then day two is going to be all of the rest. So they'll have like 30, 35 rounds to address that. Um, so to start off, I want to look at a guy, Brian Scott, who – has played in this, I believe he played in the spring league for a little bit. He has played under our head coach, Bart Andrews, before. Um, now, this is a guy who, he, he's got a nice arm on him, pretty good arm, and can fit the ball into some tight windows and move defenders with his eyes pretty decently at times. Um, and he's also pretty mobile, too. Like, he can improvise and scramble if you, if you need him to get out of the pocket and make a play. And I, I think there's a strong chance that Bart Andrews is going to take him with the third overall pick. Um, now, number two, um, I, I want to look at, Luis Perez, who's played in a number of spring leagues now. I, if you guys remember, he played in the AAF with Birmingham, Birmingham Barons, and a big storyline around him was learning the quarterback position through YouTube. And, um, you know, he was given the, the best player in Division Two while he was at college, and he's he's also got a cannon on him. I mean, that, that man can drop the ball in the bucket, and that, that, I think that's probably his best attribute. And he even spent, uh, you know, an off season, or I think he spent training camp with Sean McVay for a little bit. He did actually spend a little bit of time with the Eagles at one point, not very long, but um, did get to spend some time under McVay. And McVay and a lot of coaches have just credited his work ethic and just the grit and grind, and and the way he just goes out there and competes every single rep, no matter whether it's practice training camp, you know, preseason game or whatever it is, um, spring game, no matter what, he's going to, you know, he's going to go out there and compete. Um, so I think that's a, a great, great type of guy to have on the roster. And then um, before I get to players three through five, I want to give my honorable mention for the quarterback position. Um, this guy, I'm not sure if he'll be playing in the USFL. I believe the previous two will be entering the draft. Um, DeAndre Johnson, who, if you guys remember, he was on Last Chance U, um, EMCC, I believe and played at Florida State initially. Then after EMCC, he went over to Florida Atlantic. Didn't really get much playing time there. And then I believe he transferred to Texas Southern for his last year where he did get to play um, and didn't didn't have the best performance, but did get to kind of showcase his talent and um, you know not, didn't do well enough to really get NFL consideration or anything like that. So um, he's a potential option and, and he's got some wheels on him. Like he, 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 that's the thing with him is he's mobile. He was a D1 athlete originally for a reason. So that's what you're gonna kind of get out of him. Um, I, I would probably take the previous two guys in terms of passing, but uh, I, I'd be willing to give DeAndre a shot. With that said, moving on to my third guy. This is a guy who I watched a lot in college at TCU, Cavante Turpin. He played in the European Football League, I believe. He's a little undersized too, um, from what I understand. So kind of like Adrian Killens with the Eagles, not really expected to be able to handle the rigors of the game, but um, he is a pretty electric playmaker. Like I think he's a guy who you add to your offense in the USFL. He, he's gonna he's definitely gonna make an impact whether it's on end arounds reverses jet sweeps quick slants you know just getting down the seam um, you know running running post routes downfield running go routes like you can you can probably run him at all all three levels and you probably run him as a, a little bit as a running back and he's gonna be a kick returner slash punt returner for you and moving on another wide receiver who I'm looking at Antonio Nunn he was kind of a popular day three draft pick last year didn't get drafted I believe signed with the Falcons didn't stick around there. Um, guy from Buffalo, the Buffalo Bulls, um, and yeah, look, Antonio, while he did have his struggles with drops, he does have smaller hands, um, I, I think that he's kind of got, just the brute strength he brings, I think is huge, like, um, while he's not the, the biggest guy in the world, uh, he's not the smallest guy either, but he, he can he can throw some dudes, like, he can he can do some work after the catch, and something that Lance Zerline pointed out, that when, you, if you actually go watch the tape, and, and 
check it out. Unbelievable on fade routes, especially in the end zone. I mean, that man can go up, late hands, get the ball, and, and you know, grab it out of the air and, and score a touchdown for you. So, um, yeah, there, there's a lot to like there. You know, not the, not the flashiest guy, which is why he didn't get picked up earlier in the NFL draft to really stick around. But, um, you know, this is an opportunity for him. He's still relatively young compared to some of the other guys that will be in the USFL. For example, Luis Perez is 27, I believe. Um, none, none, you know, he just got drafted or was just up in the draft last year. So this is an opportunity for him to show, look, I, I, I can go to work. And, you know, kind of like Greg Ward did in the AIF, even though the Eagles had been kind of keeping him around, Greg Ward really, you know, made his money off of, what he did in the AAF and then came back to the Eagles, earned an opportunity that year. And last but not least, a guy who was kind of up for the draft two years ago, I believe in 2019, um, guy who is really, really athletic, Evan Worthington from Colorado. That's someone who a lot of people wanted, or a lot of people are kind of looking at in the USFL draft. I'm not sure if he's confirmed to be in it yet, but safety who can kind of play that single high role. You can definitely sit back there and, and pluck passes out of the air and be able to be able to make plays and, and read the quarterback's eyes pretty well. So. Um, depending on, you know, Andrews and the defensive coordinator has and what kind of defensive scheme they want to run, um, that's definitely a guy you can put back deep and trust that he's going to be able to cover his ground. And, um, yeah, he's rangy. He's very rangy. He's got the size for the position. I really like him. So, guys, those are, those are five to six guys I'm looking at um, for the Philadelphia Stars to draft. And um, keep an eye out. We're going to be keeping the Stars coverage going. And, you know, I hope you guys enjoy. I'm really excited for this is kind of a new opportunity. And I'm, I'm really excited for this season. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, a lot of the fans from the 80s are really excited for this team to come back. And I, I am, I'm excited to kind of join on. And um, hopefully, not this year, they'll all, you know, all the games will be in Birmingham. But hopefully next year, um, we can all be at a game at whether it's at the Link, Wells Fargo, uh, the Union Stadium or, or wherever, Franklin Field, I think would be really, really cool. It'll be awesome. So, guys, enjoy your day. Let's go Stars. And, yeah, with that said, run, baby, run. Fly, go, fly. We'll see you all later. Peace.